Forget Batman Red Rain because there's a vampire Batman story you probably haven't heard of, which is way better. Written by Jean-Marc Lossifer and Randy Lossifer with art by Ted McKeever. Welcome to Earth 1927. This is Batman Nosferatu. Another book from the Elseworlds line, this one follows a young doctor from Metropolis named Bruss Wainson. But anyways, let's get into it. The story opens up with us looking at a very gothic Metropolis with some narration stating that Metropolis has been liberated by the Superman who has killed the evil Luthor and brought the city to peace. But actually, it still sucks. I'm gonna try my best to use the names given in the story, but for example, if I mess up and say Luther instead of Luthor, then I'm sorry. The story then takes us to a high-rise penthouse and we see our boys Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson, but in this world it's Bruss Wayne's son and Dirk Grayson who are working out together. They talk about them courting Barbara and they say the game is on basically. I'm pretty sure that Dirk is not Bruss's adopted son in this world and instead they are equals, but Dirk is 19 and Bruss's age isn't mentioned but he looks like a grown man. Also having two grown men who are pursuing the same woman and being so courtly about it is nice I think. I mean it's kind of weird but you know whatever. Bruss is a doctor and Dirk is a master of law. Later on, they're going to a psychomancy, which is like a spiritual show and tell. Uh, what appears to be Alfred walks in looking very Mr. Freeze and tells him the bath is ready. Cut to a giant tower in Metropolis where we see Dr. Arkham being hassled by Eschevin Gordson to stop the seances. But Arkham says that he calls them psychomancies and that no, he actually won't stop them. Gordson says they cause normal people to go crazy and kill or commit suicide, but Arkham is like, nah, they're good. They just show our true insights. Gordson gets the last word and leaves. Cut to the cabinet of Dr. Arkham, so it's demented show and tell time. The bouncers look like jokers, but fear not because the joker is part of this story, but it's not these guys. We see Chancellor Henderson and Olson, the confidant of Superman, attending and some other familiar faces like Vicky Vale. Isn't it weird how in the last Elseworlds Batman we saw Vicky Vale as well? I hope we see her in the next Elseworlds Batman story we look at too. We then see Eschevin Gordson and his daughter Barbara Gordson walk in. She takes her seat and then Arkham starts the show. His goons roll out a catatonic person he calls the Laughing Man and he starts the seance. Arkham says that the Laughing Man's schizophrenia allows him to see into the past and the future. So Dirk chips in to ask what tomorrow's headline in the papers is going to be. To which the Laughing Man says, Death. We then see a flashback, I think, that shows the origin of the Laughing Man. He was basically Frankenstein by Luthor, who used pieces from Arkham's patients and with machinery as well was put together. We also see what might not be part of that flashback. Uh, it's him being released, and he goes into this city. He sneaks into a home and kills. We then see a news report of Eschevin Gordson, who's being murdered, and Bruss and Dirk then console Barbara, who is still wearing that dress from the seance. Chancellor Henderson says he's going to help bring justice, and Bruss chimes in too, saying, he'll help any way he can. We then head back to the cabinet of Dr. Arkham. This is either the following day or the same night. I'm having a bit of trouble understanding. We see an audience hungry for more and the art here is so goddamn beautiful. Dirk raises his hand and asks how long he has to live and the laughing man states until tomorrow's dawn. We see Arkham talking with someone about what needs to be done since the laughing man knows all. So they say Dirk is a troublemaker and because of that he must die. We then cut to Dirk doing gymnastics until he hears laughter and he sees this terrifying image. Dirk picks up a weapon and hits the laughing man in the head. He then goes for an overhead smash, but the laughing man dodges and slashes. Dirk stands there for a moment and then his head falls right off. The laughing man then seems to kind of caress Dirk's body or something. Like maybe he's drinking blood, but I don't know he's not the Nosferatu. Cut to the next day, the Chancellor ordered a full search of Metropolis to find the killer. The cops search and then we see the Palace of Sin and a poster for Diana in the Blue Amazon. Wonder Woman is an exotic dancer in this world it seems, which is pretty ice. We follow Estevan's strange son who's investigating and he bumps into Bane who looks so good in this art style. They capture Bane and pin the murders on him, but Bruss says that's not right because Bane has a good alibi and doesn't fit the MO. Bruss says it's not Bane, but Strange Strange Son says the cops are right, so just leave it alone. We see Bruss talking to Barbara next, and she says she knows Lana Langson, and she can get Bruss into a meeting with the Superman to try and get real justice. Bruss and Barbara head to his tower in Metropolis and have the meeting. They say that this is important because there are still remnants of Luthor's darkness and evil alive in this city even after he's dead, and the Superman says he'll look into it as him and Bruss have a face off. Cut to the dark city skyline. Bruss is narrating, saying Dirk messed up by alerting Arkham that he was coming after him. So Bruss is now sneaking into the tower. He goes deeper and deeper, passing Arkham's experiments. We see what looks like to be the Penguin, Scarecrow, Man-Bat, and Poison Ivy. Eventually, he sees the Joker-looking goons and follows 
kills them until he sees Arkham talking with the Chancellor. Bruce is leaning on a vent as he watches and a bolt falls off alerting them that someone is there. He makes a break for it but Arkham's experiments are set after him and we see Killer Croc. At some point someone says he's running like a bat out of hell. They chase him until he makes a huge jump to get away, and eventually he's bonked on the head by the penguin. Bruce awakens in the holds of Arkham and his goons, who chat with him a bit, saying that Barbara will die because she knows the truth like Wayne's son, and then they throw Bruce into a giant pit. Bruce looks absolutely wild here, and I have no idea why but it is beautiful. As he's falling, he thinks of death and a line from an old magic book, and we see him in the land of specters. Cut to Barbara's place. She's asleep as we see the laughing man approaching her bed, but he turns around and he sees the Nosferatu standing in the open doorway. We then get this page, so we see the eyes of each of the persons in the room. The laughing mans who are dark and cold, Barbara's who's are scared, and Nosferatu's who are filled with hate and vengeance. The laughing man then charges Batman and slashes him up. He then turns to Barbara, but the the Nosferatu rises again, so the Laughing Man stops laughing and runs and jumps out of a window. The Nosferatu chases the Laughing Man across the rooftops until the Laughing Man stops and stands on a crane. The Nosferatu appears and calls out to the Laughing Man. He lunges at him and tackles him off, and they fall to the ground and smash into the sewers. The Laughing Man has a shard or something through his body, as the Nosferatu says he's gonna build him an altar of pain, gouge out his eyes, and rend his limbs as he slashes off one of his arms. The Laughing Man makes another run for it, but comes to a dead end. The Nosferatu from behind grabs his neck and says he's gonna plunge his fingers into his beating heart. He then drops him off the edge and we see the laughing man's body laying there lifelessly as the Nosferatu stands there holding his heart in his hand. He then says that he must be the Nosferatu and then we see him making his way through the tower until he's in the office of Dr. Arkham. Arkham says hello to Wayne's son and the Nosferatu says he ain't Wayne, son. He's madness incarnate. The Nosferatu. He's living revenge. The Chancellor comes in shooting at the Nosferatu with a kryptonite gun, but is surprised it has no effect. The Nosferatu makes a swipe at the Chancellor, but before he connects, the roof is blown open by the Superman. Superman says Bruss was right, and he's going to bring these boys to justice and hand him into the Justice Lords. But the Nosferatu is like, That's your justice, dude, not mine. To which Soups is like, Law is the law, and that's justice. The Nosferatu says again, It's not, because vengeance is the only real law or something. But never mind, because the Chancellor takes a shot at Superman. He's about to kill him and says he wishes Luthor could see him do it, but the Nosferatu says to tell him yourself and pushes him off the building to his death with an Aye. The Nosferatu says madmen like these deserve his justice, not Superman's. Superman says there's no room for darkness in this city of light, but the Nosferatu says he's delusional stating that there's plenty of darkness in the city. I mean, look at these images. And the people in the darkness belong to him because light cannot exist without dark, and down in the dark, Superman doesn't rule. But Superman's like, nah, and throws Nosferatu out the building. But before he gets in another word, he gets this shocked face as the Nosferatu comes back in, hitting Superman. They continue to fight with more beautiful artwork as we see them fighting downwards into the depths and darkness of the city. I can't personally make out what we're looking at here, but I think it's beautiful. I thought it was people at first, or a city, but I'm not sure. This might be the land of specters, I really can't tell. Eventually Superman sees the importance of darkness as it exists along with the light, so he says he accepts that the dark belongs to Nosferatu and says that the darkness and its people aren't welcome into the light. Cut to the morning. We see Arkham is locked up now and screaming out that the Nosferatu is Bruss Wayne's son as the new director arrives to see him. Guess who it is? Bruss Wayne's son. This is now the cabinet of Bruss Wayne son. The end. So, I loved this. The framing of this book makes it out to be like an old black and white horror picture, with the artist credited as a cinematographer and the writers credited as screenwriters. The cover is amazing, and the entire art style being so abstract is incredible. I've seen Nosferatu, but honestly, I can't remember a thing about it. I think I fell asleep, but this was the exact opposite experience. I was engaged front to back. There are some moments that I was unsure about what was happening, like with the death, of Gordson and at the end of the Superman fight, but I am an idiot so I wouldn't be surprised if y'all understood it while I didn't. Also, I was a little confused about what was up and how Nosferatu got his powers. I understand he recited a line from a magic book that sent him to the land of specters where he probably made a deal or something, and that's why he has that red amulet around his neck, but I can't be sure. With the rule of show, don't tell, that's better in stories, but also they showed and I didn't understand what was told. But then again, I am an idiot. 
it. So anyways, I will definitely recommend this book now and will in the future as well because it's fantastic. Ass to tits. And even if the story isn't super deep, the art is breathtaking. Anyways, thanks to this guy for leaving us comment on another one of my videos recommending this book. And thanks to those who showed up for the Spider-Man 2 stream. Next week is going to be another darker Halloweenish story. But anyways, thanks for watching. Cheers. Fuck it up without you.